morning and welcome to the 16th annual International Women of Courage Awards. My name is Katrina Fotovac and I am the senior official for the Secretary's Office of Global Women's Issues at the U.S. Department of State. I am deeply honored to join you today in recognizing the awe-inspiring achievements and contributions made by the 2022 Secretary of State's International Women of Courage. The United States firmly believes that when women and girls are empowered and meaningfully participate in every sector of life, we are all safer, more prosperous, and secure. Rooted in this long-standing belief, the Secretary's Office of Global Women's Issues is tasked with an important mandate, ensuring that the rights and empowerment of women and girls in all their diversity is integrated throughout U.S. foreign policy. Despite the existence of significant barriers, and especially this year, with no short list of crises, from Ukraine to Afghanistan, women and girls around the world have persisted in making massive strides in advancing human rights, gender equity and equality, peace and security, rule of law, accountability, and so much more. For 16 years, our office has proudly supported U.S. Secretaries of State in recognizing more than 170 remarkable women re representing over 80 countries as international women of courage. To this year's International Women of Courage awardees, I want to express my sincerest admiration and deepest appreciation for your tireless work and advocacy to advance the rights of women and girls in the face of serious risk and unforgettable sacrifice. Your courage, strength, and leadership are truly inspiring, and the United States is deeply committed and privileged to honor and support you, along with so many other brave women and girls, determined to ensure that every person can live a dignified, secure, and fulfilling life. Now, it is my great honor to introduce Secretary of State Antony Blinken to the podium. Thank you. Thank you, and good morning, everyone, and good afternoon, good evening to those joining us from literally around the world, especially uh, our honorees today. Kat, thank you so much for that introduction, but also and especially for the great work that everyone in the Office of Global Women's Issues does every single day to try to advance gender equity and equality around the world. We're especially honored to be joined today by the First Lady of the United States, Dr. Jill Biden who's been such a powerful advocate for women and girls for her entire career and is elevating these issues as our first lady. Welcome, thank you for being with us today. And Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield, representing the United States and the United Nations every day with skill, with integrity, with a powerful voice uh, for these issues and virtually every other issue that is before the United Nations. I also wanna start by thanking several people for their leadership in this area. Lee Satterfield, our Assistant Secretary of State for Educational and Cultural Affairs, connecting this year's honorees with people across the United States for learning and collaboration. Jen Klein, the Executive Director of the White House Gender Policy Council, a true partner to the State Department. And Rina Amiri, our new, not so new now, Special Envoy for Afghan Women, Girls, and Human Rights. As women and girls face continuing restrictions on their education, employment, freedom of speech, ability to move freely around their communities and country, Rena is helping lead our efforts to advocate for their rights and their freedoms. As we meet, millions of Ukrainian women have fled their country with their families. Millions more have stayed to help their country fight against Russia's unprovoked, unjustified war. I saw many of them on the border with Poland just about a week ago. Uh, and it's something that stays embedded in your mind uh, and memory as you see uh, women coming across the border, children in tow, fleeing the Russian aggression. One of them uh, is uh, Ruslana Luzichenko, a singer, democracy leader in, in Ukraine, and a 2014 International Woman of, Port, uh, Woman of Courage awardee. During the Euromaidan protests in 2013, Ruslana performed the Ukrainian national anthem every night, despite death threats, to cheer other protesters, to encourage nonviolence. She's in Ukraine now, using her voice to share information about the war. Like Ruslana, this year's Woman of Courage 
are making our world more peaceful, more just. Across four continents, they're tackling complex challenges from organized crime to environmental degradation. They're advancing the rights of women, girls, LGBTQI plus people, and other marginalized groups. And despite harassment, violence, imprisonment, they persist. Unfortunately, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, this year's awardees are joining us via video. But I am deeply honored to introduce and celebrate these remarkable women. Simone Sevillera do Nascimento, a prosecutor in Rio de Janeiro, the first woman to lead the state's organized crime unit. She's taken on corruption, militias, drug trafficking. She's prosecuted high profile cases of gender based violence and attacks on activists, including the murder of a city councilwoman and her driver. In Cape Town, South Africa, Roshanda Pasco is a community leader who works to reduce gang violence. She's led marches, organized safety forums, established safe zones where children can play, and in 2019 was the only witness, the only witness willing to testify against a gang leader in a murder trial. Despite three assassination attempts, her work continues. Rizwana Hussan is a lawyer fighting for environmental justice in Bangladesh. She's led successful campaigns against commercial shrimp farming that hurt traditional fishermen and the filling in of ecologically vital wetlands around Dhaka by unscrupulous housing corporations. In another landmark case, she got the government to commit to restoring 44,000 acres of forest that is home to the Garo indigenous community. After Liberia's civil wars, in which violence against women was, was widespread, Tasia uh, Boyeno Harris dedicated herself to reducing gender-based violence, increasing women's part uh, political participation. She's organized marches against rape, helped free protesters from jail, conducted outreach to first-time women voters, trained democracy activists, and works with girls to make sure that they know their rights, their worth, their potential. Ethan Zamong is a democracy activist in Burma. In 2015, she was imprisoned for organizing a 400 mile march, protesting a ban on student unions and teaching in ethnic minority languages. During the regime's 2021 crackdown, she led other protests. A new warrant was issued for her arrest. Today, she's in hiding, but continues to advocate against the regime's oppression. Hoshifina uh, Klingor Zuniga promotes ecotourism among Colombia's uh, Pacific coast, an area with a history of conflict driven by narco traffickers and illegal armed groups. Her NGO brings together local fishermen, laborers, entrepreneurs to support tourism that protects the environment, creates jobs, empowers Afro-Colombians and indigenous communities. A social leader who defends the land and the rights of people, Josefina has been targeted for assassination. Her education center trains young people to carry her work forward. In Moldova, more than one in three women and girls over the age of 15 have experienced domestic violence. Though she faced powerful opposition, Doinu Garman, a member of parliament, campaigned for Moldova to ratify the Istanbul Convention, recognizing gender-based violence as a human rights violation. She also led the push for a gender quota in elections. Moldova now has one of the world's highest rates of women's political representation. I was there about 10 days ago, a remarkable president, a remarkable president, uh, prime minister, excuse me, who both happen to be women, leading that country through a very challenging time. Taif Sami Mohammed, Iraq's deputy finance minister, director general of the budget department. Because of her persistent efforts to end corruption, She's earned the nickname Iron Woman. Despite threats, she stopped bribes, uncovered schemes to inflate payrolls and enrich corrupt officials, redirected significant resources back to programs that serve the Iraqi people. In December, Phan Don Chang was sentenced to nine years in prison in Vietnam for her writing on democracy and human rights. She wrote about crackdowns on protesters and secretly recorded her own police interrogation. When media outlets stopped printing her work, she founded her own. 
Despite facing threats, constant threats, she continued educating others about their rights. We condemn her unjust imprisonment. We call for her immediate release. In Romania, Carmen Gheorghe fights for the rights of Roma women and girls, a group subjugated to racism and sexism, social exclusion, high rates of gender-based violence, including child and forced marriage. In the face of hostility, even hatred from authorities and communities alike, Carmen supports Roma women as they protest, petition their government, seek equal access to education, to justice, and other sectors. As a trans woman, Fumika Tresta knows the indignity of official documents that fail to reflect a person's gender identity. She fought for Nepal to add a non-binary option in 2007. The Supreme Court made that change, and Vumika later became the first trans person in Nepal to travel with an updated passport. Despite harassment, she continues to fight for expanded access to medical, economic, and legal services for LGBTQI plus people in Nepal. Najla Bangush, someone I know well, Libya's first woman foreign minister, an expert in conflict resolution. She was part of the transitional council that governed Libya in 2011 and has worked ever since toward more unified democratic governance. In 2021, less than a year after the ceasefire, she convened top military representatives from both sides. The next month, they agreed to the complete withdrawal of all foreign forces, fighters, and mercenaries from Libya, a work that is ongoing. I'm proud to be her counterpart and her colleague. These 12 women are separated by thousands of miles, but they're united in their dedication to serving their countries and communities with extraordinary courage and self-sacrifice. The United States stands with them. We've seen the remarkable progress they've made toward building peace, building security, building equality, building justice. And through our diplomacy, we're working alongside them to advance those goals. We also want to lift up other women like them. We know there are future Fasias and Bumikas and Carmens who share many of the same aspirations and face many of the same obstacles. That means we have to address gender inequities that often relegate women to the sidelines and combat the violence that women and girls around the world endure every single day. That's why we're incorporating women's equal rights throughout our foreign policy with initiatives like the National Strategy on Gender Equity and Equality. And we know policies designed with women and girls in mind are more effective, more enduring. By advancing gender equity, we can achieve greater prosperity and more lasting peace and security for all. I'm grateful to this group for sharing their experiences with us at the State Department, and not just with us, with communities across our country. Through our International Visitor Leadership Program, this year's awardees will meet with American public servants, with activists, community leaders, working on the same issues that they work on every day. And I know our American hosts will learn so much from their expertise, from their innovation, from their courage. Thank you for being generous with your time, with your wisdom, and for bringing others along with you on the journey to a better world. Thank you all for joining us to celebrate these truly extraordinary women. And it's wonderful to be with everyone today. Thank you. My name is Helen Buffay. I'm the U.S. Charge of Affairs to the People's Republic of Bangladesh. It is my great honor to introduce Rizwana Hassan as a recipient of the U.S. Secretary of State's 2022 International Women of Courage Award. We express our deepest congratulations to you, Rizwana, on this happy occasion. Rizwana demonstrates impressive courage and tenacity in her mission to protect the environment and defend the dignity and rights of marginalized people in Bangladesh. As an environmental lawyer with over two decades of activism, Rizwana has won monumental landmark legal cases against deforestation, pollution, unregulated shipbreaking, and illegal land development, among many others. She has inspired and mentored a generation of young environmental activists across Bangladesh, including fellow Bangladeshi alumni of U.S. government-funded exchanges. As the Chief Executive of the Public Interest Law Firm Bangladesh Environmental Lawyers Association, 
This work has rarely been easy and often comes at great personal cost. Rizwana faces threats from powerful commercial interests and her family has been a target for violence as well. Nevertheless, Rizwana persists, displaying exceptional courage and leadership. In Bangladesh, a country on the front lines of climate change, Rizwana inspires us all with her commitment to environmental justice, providing a voice for the moment. For her tireless work at the intersection of environmentalism and human rights, she is recognized as an international woman of courage. Thank you, Ms. Wanda, and congratulations on receiving this prestigious award. I'm Douglas Conniff, Chargé de Affairs at the United States Embassy in Brasilia. It's an honor to present Simone Sibilio do Nascimento, whose distinguished career in public service has demonstrated, time and again, her personal courage and professional devotion to justice. As one of the most prominent women in Brazil's Attorney General's office, Simone has served as a prosecutor for 18 years with the state of Rio de Janeiro's public ministry. She plays a vital role in creating more secure communities by combating organized crime and public corruption, militias, and drug trafficking. When faced with opposition, this remarkable and dedicated prosecutor has never wavered. Simone has established herself as a policy leader amid challenging and sometimes dangerous conditions. She has held accountable dozens of perpetrators of extrajudicial killings, political violence, and economic exploitation of vulnerable populations. Her fellow citizens recognize in her an important leadership example, not only for Rio de Janeiro and Brazil, but for the world. She is the first woman ever to lead the Rio de Janeiro State Attorney General's specialized unit tasked with combating organized crime, one of the most prominent and sophisticated investigative units in Brazil. Simone has developed effective prosecution strategies on cases related to money laundering, arms trafficking, and transnational crime. In 2019, she received the Attorney General's highest commendation, the organization's Medal of Honor. This year, as Brazil celebrates its bicentennial, and as we celebrate two centuries of diplomatic relations with our Brazilian partners, outstanding citizens like Simone Sibilio embody our two nations shared democratic values respect for rule of law and the willingness to stand up for liberty and justice for all we are proud to see her honored as an international woman of courage thank you on behalf of the u.s department of state i want to congratulate e thinsamong on being named one of the secretary of state's 2022 international women of courage e thinsamong is an inspiring leader I am personally inspired by her courageous work to restore Burma's democracy. Ethan Zemung is a long-standing activist working to advance the rights of members of ethnic minority groups and promote and protect human rights in Burma. In 2015, she bravely endured detention and torture by the military for participating in a nationwide protest movement against a ban on student unions and teaching in ethnic minority languages. In the 2020 general election, she was one of the youngest candidates running for a seat in the lower house of parliament on a platform of promoting and protecting human rights and fighting discrimination. Following the military's brutal coup on February 1st, 2021, she has been a prominent voice for democracy and minority rights. She was among the first to lead anti-coup protests, inspiring countless peaceful pro-democracy supporters and encouraging participation in the civil disobedience movement. Currently, she serves as the Deputy Minister for Women, Youth, and Children's Affairs of the National Unity Government. Although forced into hiding for fear of arrest and torture and even death, she continues to speak out against the military takeover and to work tirelessly for a more inclusive, democratic future for the people of Burma. Thank you, Ethan Zemung, for your leadership and courage, and congratulations. As we celebrate the contributions of courageous women around the world, it's my privilege to introduce Josefina Klinger, a Colombian human rights defender and environmental activist from Chico. For over 15 years, Josefina has worked to empower Afro-Colombian and indigenous communities by building ecotourism on Colombia's Pacific coast. Josefina has given the youth of her region hope for the future inspiring them to protect and share Colombia's incredible biodiversity. Although Josefina's work inspires admiration in most, 
It also draws constant threats against her life from narco traffickers fighting to control territory along Colombia's Pacific coast. The region's vulnerable communities have suffered for decades as armed groups exploit the land for their own benefit. Despite persistent danger, Josefina's bravery and commitment endure. She is an inspiration to all of us. The people of Colombia can only achieve lasting peace through the dedication of individuals like Josefina. The U.S. Embassy in Bogota is proud to work alongside human rights defenders and environmental activists throughout the country as we support Colombia's implementation of the 2016 peace accord and promote economic development around the country. Josefina's work elevates the voices of Afro-Colombian and indigenous communities who want to protect their land from exploitation and create a better future for their children. We are honored to join Josefina in her quest to secure a more peaceful future for all Colombians. That's why we are naming Josefina Klinger as a true woman of courage. From the U.S. Embassy in Iraq, we are delighted that Deputy Finance Minister Tayef Sami Mohammed has been chosen as a finalist for the 2022 International Women of Courage Award for her heroic stand against corruption. Through her strength of character, integrity, and adherence to the highest ethical standards, Ms. Mohammed's efforts within the Ministry of Finance have saved the Iraqi government billions of dinars from being lost to corruption. Ms. Mohammed is independent and does not belong to any political party. She has no powerful political patrons and can expect no political top cover for her actions. Despite enormous pressure, including death threats and threats of professional retribution, she has maintained her courageous stance and weathered repeated attacks for serving as an anti-corruption champion. She is now a frontline leader in fighting against corrupt practices and is known as the Iron Woman. Ms. Mohammed has worked the majority of her 36-year career in the finance ministry, starting as a budget analyst and working her way up to her current position as Deputy Minister and Director General for the Budget. She frequently spots irregularities in budget figures and has prevented countless attempts by corrupt actors to pad the budget. Through her vigilance against corruption and staunchness in adhering to the austerity measures approved by the current government, she ensured that the government of Iraq had the funds to pay the monthly wages of six million government employees and retirees despite budget difficulties caused by lower oil prices and crumbling economic indicators during the COVID pandemic. Ms. Mohammed also has led negotiations for economic reforms with international finance institutions. We are very proud this year that the Secretary will be awarding Ms. Mohammed the International Women of Courage Award. We hope that her example serves as an inspiration for other Iraqis to be courageous and fight corruption in the face of all obstacles. On behalf of the entire U.S. Embassy team here in Liberia, I am so excited to introduce you to Ms. Fasia Boriena Harris as one of the Secretary of State's 2022 International Women of Courage. Ms. Harris is the first Liberian to be honored with this important distinction. But she's part of a distinguished community of women leaders in Liberia who work every day to address the issues of women's rights and gender equality, helping to dismantle the obstacles that women unfortunately still face here. Ms. Harris, supported throughout her life by her mother, Nyama Harris, and her aunt, Wilametta D. Harris, represents a generation of women who had to come of age during the country's civil war and overcame immense challenges to gain an education. Her commitment to help protect girls from school-based sexual harassment and unplanned or early pregnancy is essential to stop a vicious cycle that limits women's participation in every professional sector by normalizing assault and curtailing women's education. The networks of activists and Liberian feminists she helped establish organized the country's first independent women-led protests against gender-based violence in 2018. And her bravery to stand up to counter protesters and aggressive security personnel were pivotal during a three-day anti-rape protest in August 2020 that directly led President George Weah 
declaring rape a national emergency and announcing other initiatives crucial to protecting Liberian women. We urge the government to follow through on their commitments with all due speed. We are so proud to be able to introduce Ms. Harris and to recognize her as an international woman of courage. Hello, I'm Richard Norlin, the American ambassador to Libya, and it's my great pleasure to introduce Najla Mangouche, Libya's foreign minister, as a winner of uh, this year's 2022 Secretary of State's Award for Women of Courage. You know, it's hard enough to be the foreign minister of a country coming out of a period of civil war and intense political turmoil. Uh, but on top of that, to be Libya's first female foreign minister uh, poses quite a unique set of challenges. And uh, Najla Mangouche has done a remarkable job in meeting those challenges. Some of her most important accomplishments, uh, I would uh, count uh, rooting out corruption uh, in appointments uh, at the foreign ministry, some of the diplomatic uh, postings, um, her role in consolidating the October 2020 ceasefire by supporting the 5 plus 5 Joint Military Commission uh, through intense diplomatic engagement with countries like Russia and Turkey, um, and in particular, her role as the inspiration for a stabilization conference that took place in Tripoli late last year, bringing together high-level uh, representatives of the international community who saw that Libya is able to play its own leadership role in bringing itself out of a period of tense political turmoil. Uh, she builds on a distinguished record uh, as an academic and civil society activist. Um, she's a Fulbright alumna, uh, got a master's degree from Eastern Mennonite University. Uh, she was a member of the National Transition Council, which uh, took place after the fall of Muammar Gaddafi. And um, she's done a great deal to uh, promote the reintegration of militia members into civil society. Uh, Libya is very lucky to have uh, Najla Mangouche as its foreign minister, and the U.S. Embassy is very lucky to have her as a partner. Bunaziwa from Chisinau, Moldova. It is my great honor to introduce Doina Germann, Chair of the Moldovan Parliament's Foreign Relations and European Integration Committee. Ms. German is a leader in the fight for gender equality and the rights of women and girls in Moldova. She led the passage of landmark legislation establishing electoral gender quotas that resulted in women now holding 40% of the seats in Moldova's parliament, an all-time high. Ms. German was also the driving force behind Moldova's ratification of the Istanbul Convention, a treaty designed to protect women and girls from domestic and gender-based violence. Despite personal attacks and pressure against her and her family, this intrepid leader never yielded in her efforts to secure protection and justice for countless survivors of gender-based violence. The citizens of the Republic of Moldova have clearly expressed their vision for their country as a fully democratic and prosperous state, firmly integrated within Europe, secure within its internationally recognized borders, and with an effective government that is accountable to its citizens. Ms. German's work is improving the lives of women and girls and, by increasing their political representation, is empowering women to fully contribute to their country's transformation. We are proud to recognize you, Doina German, as one of Secretary Blinken's 2022 International Women of Courage. U.S. Embassy Kathmandu congratulates Bumika Shrestha on receiving the International Women of Courage Award. When Bumika came out as transgender at age 16, her family was harassed and she was kicked out of school and physically assaulted. Yet, as Bumika has said, Living a lie throughout your life can be very damaging, both to the soul and society. She grew up to challenge Nepal's social taboos and discrimination. She helped shape the country into a regional leader for transgender rights. Joining the Blue Diamond Society, now the foremost organization advocating for the rights of the LGBTQI community, she worked to bring these issues into the national and political discourse. She fought to include LGBTQI plus individuals in the national census and started awareness pro programs in schools after having experienced bullying in school herself. She and the Blue Diamond Society started a campaign to allow transgender people to correct their citizenship certificates and reflect their gender identity rather than the sex assigned to them at birth. In 2007, Nepal's Supreme Court held that individuals could identify as third gender in an other category for citizenship documents. But 
It did not address one's ability to change their gender marker to match their whole identity. She subsequently changed her gender marker to other but continued her lobbying efforts. After being harassed during international travel because her passport still listed her gender as other, she fought even harder. And in April 2021, she became the first transgender person in Nepal to successfully change the gender marker on their passport from the other category to female or male, opening a pathway for other transgender, intersex, and gender non-conforming people to live more openly and equally. After enduring harassment and violence in order to advocate for human rights, she has become the face and voice of LGBTQI advocacy in Nepal. Her courage inspires us all, and it uplifts, as she says, both soul and society. So congratulations, Bumika, on receiving this prestigious award. Namaste. It is my great honor to introduce Carmen Georgia of Romania as one of the Secretary of State's 2022 International Women of Courage. Ms. Georgia has demonstrated exceptional courage and leadership in advocating for Roma women and girls. As Carmen proudly and repeatedly states, her work starts where roads, water, and power supply networks end. That is where the Roma community lives. Carmen empowers these women to fight for their rights and demand access to education, healthcare, infrastructure, property ownership, and identity documents. Despite racism, skepticism, and discrimination from local authorities, Carmen and local Roma continue to exercise their freedom of speech and assembly to voice their complaints. Despite the adversity she has faced, Carmen courageously persists in her efforts to empower Roma women. We applaud you, Carmen Georgia, for the work you've done and continue to do to create a more fair, tolerant, and peaceful society. I'm so proud to be here today to introduce Roshanda Pasco from Cape Town, South Africa as our International Women of Courage wardee. In July 2016, Shanda witnessed a brutal murder of a young man by a gang member. The killer stared directly at Shanda, only a few feet away from her, threatening her as he continued to stab the young man. Shanda knew the victim well, and she comforted him while he lay dying in the street. And due largely to her credibility as a peace activist, gang members began to harass her, and they threatened her in an effort to silence her. When she persisted, they broke into her home and, and fired guns at her, at her colleagues, and even at her children. But thanks to her courageous testimony, a South African court convicted the perpetrators and they issued the maximum prison sentences. Despite these sentences, the gang leader maintained a hit on Shanda, and she and her family continue to this day to live in hiding. Shanda embodies the truth. Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather it's pushing on despite that fear. The entire U.S. mission to South Africa and I are pleased and privileged to present Shonda Pasco as an International Women of Courage awardee. And we thank her for her service, for her sacrifice, and for her commitment to the human rights and dignity of all people. My team at the U.S. mission to Vietnam and I are privileged to introduce author, journalist, and 2022 International Women of Courage Award nominee, Pham Duan Chang, whose fearless pursuit of a fully inclusive society and greater space for freedom of expression in Vietnam has attracted international recognition. Through her writing and interviews, Chang uses thoroughly researched legal arguments to advocate for human rights, rule of law, and the inclusion of all voices in political spaces. She does not just advocate for inclusion, she facilitates inclusion. As an author, Chang has made the complexities of politics accessible to her compatriots with the aim of expanding political participation. As a journalist, Chang reported on political topics and social issues previously untouched by Vietnamese media. The United States values our comprehensive partnership with Vietnam. We work to help encourage a strong, prosperous, and independent Vietnam. And we believe firmly that in order for this country to thrive, it needs to embrace the openness, transparency, inclusion, and respect for the rights of all of its citizens that Pham Duan Chang has relentlessly sought through her writing and advocacy. When Vice President Harris was in Hanoi last August, she said, we will always be true to our values and will not shy away from speaking out, even when those conversations may be difficult to have and perhaps difficult to hear. Pham Duan Chang's fearless advocacy has come at great personal cost. She is currently serving a nine-year sentence in prison in Vietnam on the charge of creating propaganda against the state. And still, Chang has attained both humility and sense of hope 
for a bright future in which all individuals in Vietnam can express their views freely and without fear of retaliation. We applaud you, Pham Duan Chang, for your work as a champion of human rights. Your bravery continues to inspire people in Vietnam and all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the First Lady of the United States, Jill Biden. Thank you. Thank you very much. And good morning. Amazing women, weren't they? Oh my gosh. From soft lullabies to battle cries for justice, Women nurse and nurture, teach and build, lead and dream our world forward each and every day. Women have never been silent, but women have been silenced with violence, with hate, discrimination and isolation, with work and care that is never done. Women have been told that they are dangerous, and that's because they are. Dangerous to corruption and injustice. When we raise our voices, we have the power to shatter the shields of oppression. That's why cowardly men stop girls from learning. It's why women's bodies become casualties of war. Like all of us, my heart has ached watching videos of Ukraine. Sick kids fleeing on makeshift medical trains, the unthinkable bombing of a maternity ward, parents weeping over their children's broken bodies in the streets. The senselessness is staggering. We also know that there are horrors happening around the globe that never make the evening news. There are children's broken bodies and women who bear the scars of war all around the world. And there are women everywhere whose voices need to be heard because stories are powerful. They shape our lives, defining the shades of our joy and sorrow dividing what matters from the rest. They're how we understand and connect to each other beyond language and distance and time. They foster empathy and compel each of us to act. I continue to teach writing at a nearby community college. And in my classes, I watch students find confidence when they lay their lives down on paper. I've seen them draw closer to one another when they share, realizing that their differences are precious and their similarities infinite. The stories we tell mattered. My husband, our president, knows that. He knows how the stories he heard from survivors of abuse kept him up at night how they inspired him to write and champion the Violence Against Women Act. He knows that their vo women's voices have been at the heart of resistance to tyranny and that no country that oppresses half of its population can thrive. And he knows that the United States must lead a global community dedicated to stopping the corruption and injustice and brutality that silences women. Because there can be no true democracy, no true peace, no true prosperity without women's voices. There can be no history without our stories. And that's why what we do here resonates far beyond these walls. For 16 years, these awards have lifted up the voices of women around the world. 
It has shined light on the struggles and strength of women in the global North, South, East, and West. It has declared to all, the United States stands with these heroes. They are not alone. Today, we honor 12 women and we go further, giving them a platform to speak their truth in their own words. We recognize the power that they hold to take on the most dire challenges of our time and move us all to do more. When you hear their words, hold them close to your heart. Share them with your daughters and sons and with everyone you know. Tell their stories because they can inspire our world to rise to their courage. Tell them because women warriors everywhere need to hear what's possible. Tell them because there's a sisterhood of girls who hold a university of a universe of possibility within themselves who need to know that the future belongs to them too. To all women of courage, those fighting injustice in Latin America or hoping to learn in the Middle East, working for democracy and stability in Europe, protecting their families in Sub-Saharan Africa, or speaking out against gender violence in Asia, we will continue to work with passion and persistence with development and democracy to, to stop those who wish to silence you. And we will tell your stories even when you cannot. It has added more force and strength to my work. To me, it means inspiration, encouragement, empowerment, and of course, more responsibility. Most important is it recognizes women's positive contribution for peace, justice, and happiness in the society. O Prêmio International Women of Courage representa para mim, como mulher, como promotora de justiça do Estado do Rio de Janeiro, um importante reconhecimento internacional ao meu trabalho, uma mensagem que fala profundamente no meu coração e na minha alma, o sentimento de que vale a pena a defesa intransigente dos direitos das vítimas, a luta pelas famílias enlutadas, desfalcadas pela perda dos seus entes, cada dia de trabalho, cada noite não dormida, a certeza de que cada um de nós vai encontrar no futuro um pouquinho daquilo que deu de si no presente. Esse prêmio me, esti me estimula e me inspira a trilhar no caminho que foi pavimentado por tantas promotoras de justiça que me antecederam e que eu apenas dei continuidade ao trabalho. Mas esse prêmio me encoraja e me conduz no caminho da responsabilização dos criminosos e pela defesa do direito de viver de todas essas vítimas com quem eu me relacionei ao longo do meu trabalho para quem eu orgulhosamente ofereço hoje esse prêmio que eu recebo. ไม่ละมาจมารอยินตันซามามาจมากะรอเมมานิงานกะบาชวีกอกแคยัตตาอสุยาสีกาเนปิยอมาอัจฉันแผ่เมมาสิทธะกะอนาเต้ยุเกย
En mi activismo es coger mi femenino, mi negrura y mi condición y convertirla en una oportunidad donde muchos seres se identifiquen. Este es un privilegio porque no me canso de decir, primero te devuelve a veces la fe, la esperanza, porque los procesos no son lineales, tienen altibajos y en esos hay momentos en que estás con estos lados más bajos y de, y de sombras también. Entonces, las mujeres están visibilizadas gracias a este premio y yo quiero que este premio inspire a las, a las niñas, a la nueva generación. Que nunca se olviden de soñar. Siempre me voy a acordar que yo no soñé en la infancia, yo no soñé en la adolescencia, no tuve tiempo de soñar. Pero que el día que soñé, mis sueños se hicieron realidad. ليست هذه المرة الأولى التي تتسلم فيها المرأة العراقية جائزة ذات المرأة الشجاعة تكريمي بهذه جائزة المرأة ذات الشجاعة فخر لي كأمرأة عراقية ممثل نساء العراق بمهنيتي ومثال القيادة والتضحية والشجاعة والتحديات والدور في صنع القرار ستمنحني هذه الجائزة حافزا أقوى على بذل أقصى الجهود لتمكين المرأة اقتصاديا وتحقيق المساواة بين المجتمع وفي مختلف الظروف المتغيرات التي تواجه المرأة وأخيرا أقدم كل الشكر للقائمين على هذه الجائزة والجهود التي يبذلوها لها في كل عام لأحياء هذه المبادرة المهمة لنساء العالم أجمع This is a recognition of Liberian women and girls' daily and immense contributions to change in Liberia's development. A recognition of the many struggles and uphill joinings we continue to travel for justice, inclusion, participation, equality, and the daily scraps for the collective benefits of society. It is a reminder of the countless pieces of evidence wherein Liberian women have proven themselves beyond reasonable doubts that they can break boundaries and overcome limitations across all sectors. The Women of Courage Award is another opportunity to make more visible Liberian women's work. It is another way that tells her stories to generations after us about the importance of finding one's voice and using it to bring about needed changes, dismantling systematic barriers that discriminate against women and girls. Violenza domestică este o realitate terifiantă pentru multe femei din Republica Moldova. Cred cu tărie că violența nu este o normă, nu este o tradiție. Tocmai de aceasta Ratificarea Convenției de la Istanbul a fost o prioritate personală pentru mine și am depus toate eforturile ca această ratificare să devină realitate. Femeile au dreptul la o viață fără violență. Namaste, mi-e nandu mi-e ca spresă, mă transgenă rământ. Mă zic du-le amă în susaile mă bigăt la amă să mă identific ai răsă, la eu unic de talăg al păsăngi mă asă încă o paradoxie. Bigăt cu din hărmă, हमें जस्तो यह उन्हें कथा लाइन का अल्पसंख्यक एक समुदाय ले दे रहे समस्याएं उन्हें करती हो विभिन्न किस्म के पेड़ वाब विभिन्न कुछ तीखा रूम पर थियो तो आइली का अवस्था में आइली को नया समिदान दो हजार बाल तर ले हमें जस्तो यह उन्हें कथा लाइन का अल्पसंख्यक समुदाय को आवाज ऐसे सुनिश्चित करेगा महिला साहसी पुरस्कार ले व्यक्ति को मेहनत परिसंभल परिसान गर्सो सभी जानले धन्य बादिन से हंसो मेरे में उस तकार में गिरगे संत एक्टिविस्ट रोमन शिफ्ट फेमिनिस्ट प्रेसिडेंट आ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एरोमनिया एसोसिएशन पर तो प्रमोवर आ ड्रेप्ट लोर फेमिल और रोमन एरोमनिया आ फर्स्ट इन्फिनिटा तंदो अमिडोइ iar scopul nostru este să schimbăm narațiunea despre noi, femeile rome, în comunitate și în societate. Ce facem în comunitate este să lucrăm după metoda SORA, o metodă de intervenție feministă romă care a, a fost dezvoltată în 8 ani de activitate cu contribuția multor femei rome din comunitate și din organizația în care lucrez. O intervenție feministă care și-a propus să repoziționeze femeile rome atât în comunitate cât și în societate. Cred că este pentru noi este foarte important să ne restabilim poziția noastră ca femei rome nu doar în comunitate, dar și în societate. 
este foarte important pentru noi să schimbăm povestea și istoria despre noi, experiențele și vocile noastre să fie auzite și mai mult decât atât, este momentul pentru ca noi să, fim, să avem acest curaj să preluăm acest, aceste inițiative. So there's a word means so much to me. I want to thank the American Embassy for recognizing the work that I'm doing on the Cape Flats against crime and violence uh, and femicide against women and children. I think this means also so much to our youth out there, knowing their circumstances don't determine where they can go. And, and I hope it will encourage them to stand up and rise above their circumstances. I think the other thing for me is the building of bridges across the world globally with other countries because as sisters we are facing the same challenges in our countries and together we can do more and we can overcome. Ladies and gentlemen, the representative of the United States of America to the United Nations, Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield. Good morning and thank you. It's really an honor to be here. And I'm so grateful to be here with First Lady Dr. Biden and Secretary Blinken and the State Department for hosting this inspiring event. Most of all, I'm in awe of the heroines we are here today to celebrate. You are activists and journalists, peacemakers and parliament members. You are prosecutors fighting organized crime and corruption. You are community leaders bravely testifying against gang leaders. You are defenders of the environment, of indigenous rights, of LGBTQI plus rights, of human rights. You have shut down sexual harassment and lifted up the next generation of women leaders. You listen, you lead, and you show courage beyond belief. Of, car, of course, four too many courageous women are not able to be here, and that includes one of our honorees, Pham Don Chang, who is imprisoned in Vietnam for her work to protect human rights and promote political participation. And then there are the tens of thousands of other women, too many to count, who demonstrate unimaginable bravery in the face of impossible cruelty each and every day. Right now, I cannot stop thinking about the mothers in Ukraine, the mothers who've been forced to give birth in bomb shelters, the mothers who've been forced to pass their children alone, terrified into crowded trains, leaving the country, the mothers who've taken up arms to defend their families, their communities, their country. And then there are the women and girls in Afghanistan, who are being excluded from schools and jobs after decades of progress are the women and girls in Ethiopia who are being subjected to rape as a weapon of war. These are all our sisters. You are here to represent them and all the women facing such grave challenges throughout the world. And it is on us all of us here in this room and across the world to do right by them. For our part at the United Nations, today marks the opening of the 66th session of the Commission on the Status of Women. It's a massive annual session where the world's governments come together to advance gender equality and the empowerment of women. And this year, we're paying particular attention to the role of women in the climate crisis both how women and girls are acutely affected and how we are poised to lead the way forward. I was proud to announce our diverse delegation to CSW today, which will champion our values and the full, equal and meaningful participation of, and of girls and gender diverse people on all fronts. They understand just as you do, how important it is that we speak up for those who are not in the room. Our keynote speaker, Foreign Minister Dr. Nala Magush, is also about to do just that for us. 
She became the first female foreign minister of Libya almost exactly a year ago today, right around the same time I became uh, the ambassador to the United Nations. During Libya's 2011 revolution, she headed the National Transition Council's public engagement unit, dealing directly with Libya and the world, world civil society organizations. She's an expert in and a practitioner of conflict resolution, which she studied as a Fulbright scholar and then as a PhD student here in the United States before becoming an assistant professor of law at Benghazi University. What more powerful than any degree or title, Foreign Minister Mangush embodies stalwart bravery in the face of harassment and threats, sexism and violence. And while men make war, she's, and I know she is proud to speak on behalf of all of the IWOC recipients today. And with that, it's my privilege to introduce our keynote speaker, Foreign Minister Nala Mangush. Thank you. It is truly an honor and a numerous privilege to speak on behalf of the Women of Courage Award recipients. My sisters and the very brave and courageous women all around the globe, it is with great humility that I stand before you as an honorary for the International Women of Courage Award, which has been established in the United States of America as the biggest advocate of women rights. My voice echoes for all women. We must do what is right and continue to uphold and encourage each others in advocating of the rights of all. Madam First Lady, Secretary Blinken, and all the State Department, I say thank you for selecting the 12 recipients from around the world for their acts of courage and bravery. I realize that there are more women that should have been nominated. We all know that there are many more women from around the globe who demonstrate exceptional courage every day. Women who decide to make difficult choices and take the bumpier road not knowing where the road would lead, but still take the risks. They know that their choices may cause drastic changes in their societies and at times of advisories, but they continue to follow their inner compass and take the chance to create differences within their communities. The way that I understand courage is that there is no courage without vulnerability. Brian Brown said, how can we be courageous without being vulnerable? She added, true courage comes when we decide to take it risk without knowing the outcome. It means showing up and letting yourself be seen despite the risk. When you show up in this way, you open yourself up to joy and connection, but you can only do it by accepting that there could be pain. When you show up to work the day after you got divorced, when there are young girls walking to their schools, knowing that they may lose their lives because of ongoing conflict. When you decide to leave your kids for a greater cause because you decided to teach them to be brave and strong and instead of being depend on you all the time. When you decide to listen to your true self when it is hard to speak up. When you decide to be a woman in senior position, knowing that that means when you be under the microscope all the time, being judged, criticized, and bullied, that carriage. Women who decide to risk it all and leave their home, countries, their safe havens, in search of self-fulfillment elsewhere, that is carriage. Women who believe in change, no matter how small, and seek to make it happen in their families, societies, and countries, these are all courageous women not to mention women in politics, something I also get to experience firsthand every day. When you are the only woman at the table, you are being ignored, overlooked, and not addressed. It can be very intimidating. They can make you feel invisible. Then the flame inside you ignites. Your aura and your presence forces them to acknowledge and respect you. This gives you the confidence to move forward and continue to pave the way for other women in reaching their great potential. In closing, Albert Einstein once said, women who follow the crowd will usually go no farther than the crowd. 
Women who walk alone are likely to find herself in places no one has ever been before. We should continue to unite and build up each other in a word that often overlooks our accomplishment. On behalf of all the 12 selected recipients of the Women of Courage Award, I would like to thank you once again.